It's the dictionary. 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 Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is Spencer. I am Spencer. How are you doing today? What's what's going on with you today? It is August 23rd, 2023, 6.51 a.m. I'm in my work office. I'm getting an early start because I got to go take the, the cats to the vet this afternoon. I got to leave work a bit early for just some normal like checkup stuff. Oh, man, you got to You got to you got to take care of your your animals when you got them. Got to get their blood checked. One of them is on thyroid medication now because she's 15. Oh, boy. Oh, I don't want to think about the future of that. That's what, that's what, well, somebody, they think there was some comedian who was like, you get an animal and you know you are, your future is you are giving yourself a whole lot of heartache because they're going to die. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about more electricity words. <laughs> Great transition. Okay, the first word is electrodialysis and it is one word and I think let's see looking ahead I believe every single one of the words in this episode is one word electrodialysis e-l-e-c-t-r-o d-i-a-l-y-s-i-s noun from 1921 dialysis accelerated by an electromotive force applied to electrodes adjacent to the membranes, and electrodialytic is an adjective. I feel like I have a fuzz on my nose. Is that why it's so itchy? Is it the mustache hairs? So, this is the process of dialysis. We talked about this in the way back in the Ds, one whole letter ago. Um, I mean, I know for, for people who have kidney problems, dialysis, it's pulling the blood out of the body, cleaning it, and then putting it back in, I think on the other side. That's a whole crazy thing that happens. Um, but this specifically is electrodialysis, which I assume is how they do all dialysis these days. Um, but it's uh, it's with an electromotive force. It's, there's electricity pumping through this thing, making this thing happen. I, I believe that that would be the standard dialysis method. 1921? 1921 was when they were doing that. Whew. Can you imagine being the first one? Like, this new technology? Oh my god. Electricity? You're gonna pull my blood out? And then put it back in? With electricity? Uh, let's see. Okay, I need to do a sound effect. And, I mean, there's so many crazy there's so many topics i think in this episode so many weird words um we're just gonna do something like something something weird and crazy like okay the next word is electrodynamics noun from 1827 a branch of physics that deals with the effects arising from the interaction of electric currents with magnets with other currents or with themselves. Okay, it's physics. We're talking about physics and the effects arising from the interaction. So what happens? What happens when electricity, electric currents uh, interact with one mag magnets or other types of currents or with themselves, other electric currents or their own electric current? What happens when those things interact? I have no idea what happens. You gotta go talk to an electrodynamicist. Is that the one who is studying this stuff? I don't know. Um, I feel like I want to put a link in the show notes for electrodynamics, so you can learn more about that because it sounds fascinating. What are the dynamics of the situation when electrical currents meet other friends and enemies and things? What happens? I don't know what happens. Boo! Next is electroencephalogram. Uh, if you remember from the previous episode, because of course you listened to the previous episode, everybody knows you listened to the previous episode, uh, we had electrocardiogram and electrocardiograph, and one of the words in there, um, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong one, 
Uh, let's see, let's do a quick look. No, okay, but the reason I brought that up was because here we have electroencephalogram, and then we will have a, an electroencephalograph. Same thing, gram graph. The gram is, I believe, the, um, the visual representation, which is weird because if you, you would think that the graph would be the one that one that's like, oh, it's a graph, we're making a graph. Um, but uh, no, it's, uh, I think it's the other way around. The gram is the visual thing, and the graph is the other thing. But what, we got to read it. We got to find out. Let's not make assumptions. Do I need to spell this one? E-L-E-C-T-R-O-E-N-C-E-P-H-A-L-O-G-R-A-M. Electroencephalogram. Noun from 1934. The tracing of brain waves made by an electroencephalograph. So this one, the encephalogram, this is about the brain waves. They put electrodes on your skull place, and then they read the waves. They read what's going on, the electric currents, the all the stuff that's going on up there. What's going on up there? There's a lot of stuff going on up there. Okay, quickly, let's go to electroencephalograph. And I believe, let's let's just take a, a look in the, uh, let's see, with the uh, would it be the EN section? Yes, let's go to the EN section real quick and see, like, is there, is there this word without the EN? En, encephalogram? Yes, E-N-C-E. Let's do a quick look. Encephala, well, yes, we have the prefix. Encephala or encephal, or encephalo, and then we have some other words related to that, so I believe that, yeah, that's going to be probably related to the brain, I would think. I'm not going to read them, though. Okay, electroencephalograph, noun from 1936, two years after the gram, the visual representation of the thing that isn't going to get invented for two years. I'm sure there's some reason why those years don't make sense. This is an apparatus for detecting and recording brain waves. Electroencephalographer, electroencephalographer, that is a noun. Electroencephalographic is an adjective. Electroencephalographically is an adverb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten syllables. And electroencephalography is a noun. Wow, big, big, big words. Okay, next word. It's not so long. Electrofishing. Electrofishing? What are we fishing for electric rays and electric eels? Electrofishing is a noun from 1950. Fishing that employs a direct electric current to attract and usually temporarily immobilize fish for easy capture. I am not a fan of fishing in general. I have done it many years ago before I went vegetarian and then vegan. But, I mean, I, I... Okay, you know, there's the question of like, if you were stranded, if you were all alone, if you needed blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, maybe possibly in a sustainable way in some extreme, extreme circumstances. But... Fish have been proven to be smarter than I think most people think they are. They have feelings. They have emotions. I don't believe that having a hook in your mouth is going to be not painful. Do they really not have nerves in their mouth? Uh, I don't know. Just the act of being pulling them out of their, their environment where they can breathe, and then they're like... No, it's not good. But this, this, is, this takes it to another level. Direct electric current to attract them. You're using an electric current to say, come here, come here. Oh, this is not a trap at all. Come here, come over here. There's some tasty things. <laughs> um, and then you probably shock them to immobilize them. And then you just scoop them out, up, up, scoop them up out of the water. You're like, you are stunned. Shut, set your phasers to stun. And so we can we can easily grab you for for hunting, for putting up on our wall, for eat whatever it is. 
this this is this takes it to a whole other level. You're literally shocking the fish. You might as well take a shotgun to the water. Let's move on. We have electroform. This is a transitive verb from 1931. To form by electrodeposition on a mold. Uh, electroform is also a noun. And the thing that you might be forming is shaped articles. And I don't know at all what that means. But we can go back to electrodeposition. Uh, where was that? Was that in the previous episode? Uh, yes, I think it was. Got to go. Got to go a ways down. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's all about depositing maybe metal or rubber by electrolysis. Um, and so this electroform, you're forming a thing by electrodeposition on a mold. So the mold, you, you're using this, what is it, electrolysis to put things into this mold, deposit things with electricity, and you're forming stuff. I don't know what kinds of stuff, but but fun stuff maybe. Boop a doop a boo. Next is electrogenic, and that is spelled G E N I C. Electrogenic. Adjective from circa 1890, of or relating to the production of electrical activity in living tissue. My brain, before I saw the word tissue, I saw living, and I thought we were going to say living room. Electrical activity in the living room. No. In living tissue. Relating to the production of electrical activity in living tissue, as in an electrogenic pump. And so, pump. What What is the pump doing? Is the pump uh, pumping into the heart, into the lungs, into the veins? There's different kinds of pumps. There's, um, I think, diabetics uh, can have a pump, if I remember correctly. Uh, lots of different things. So I guess it's, you put a pump on the skin, and the skin is uh, an electric conductor. And so I, I, I guess that would be what we're talking about. Electrogenic. Relating to the production of electricity. Yeah. Electrogenesis is a noun. ba ba da ba 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 Electrogram, noun from circa 1935. This is a tracing of the electrical potentials of a tissue, like the brain or the heart, made by means of electrodes placed directly in the tissue instead of on the surface of the body. Into the tissue of the brain and the heart. So we've got the electrocardiograph, which I believe is where they put the electrodes on the skin, not in the heart, but on the skin. And to read, you can read enough of the heart from that surface level. Same with electroencephalograph. They put electrodes on the brain, I believe. Where else would you put it? You're not going to put it on your butt to read the waves of the brain. On the skull. But this one, electrogram, so this is the tracing of what happens when you put the electrodes directly onto the brain, onto the heart, so you can get probably the most, most, the most, most accurate, the best, that's where I was going, the best, most accurate uh, readings. And then the electrogram is the visual representation of that, all those waves, the brain waves, the gamma waves, the beta waves, the heart pumping waves, that's... Those are less waves and they're more, I mean, they'll probably be represented like waves, but those are more like the um, the, the lub-dubs, lub-dub. Uh, the, the one side pumps to the other chamber and then that pumps it out into the aorta and then it goes to the system. That's electrogram. Electrohydraulic is next. Hydraulic, hydraulic. Adjective from 1922. One, of or relating to a combination of electric and hydraulic mechanisms. You got both. Hydraulic and electric. It's electrohydraulic. Two, involving or produced by the action of very brief but powerful pulse discharges of electricity under a liquid resulting in the generation of shock waves and highly reactive chemical species, as in an 
electrohydraulic F effect. What was that? What did we say? Involving or produced by the action of very brief but powerful pulse discharge pulse discharges. So there are these pulses that they're very strong but brief. They're short. Uh, they're, it's pulses of electricity, discharges of electricity, but it's under a liquid resulting in the generation of shock waves and highly reactive chemical. Okay, so like under the waves, under the um, the liquid, they're, they're discharging this electricity briefly but strongly and... There, and then the sh there will be shock waves of electricity going through this liquid. Uh, hydraulics, I guess, hydro is kind of in there, but I think of hydraulics as something else. I mean, some machines use hydraulics. Is that related to water? I don't know anything about hydraulics, but it seems like maybe in maybe in this number two one, it's related to water or liquid. I don't know. Oh, I just hit my funny bone. <laughs> Gosh, darn it. Okay, electrojet, noun from 1955. A concentration of atmospheric electric current found in the regions of strong auroral displays and along the magnetic equator. Okay, what is this? A concentration of atmospheric electric current. Okay, so this is electric current in the air, in the atmosphere, um, specifically along the magnetic equator. So I, what's how is that different than the actual equator? They're probably pretty close. The, you know, the, the Earth has a magnetic poles north and south, and then they switch. And um, so, you know, the, I guess the equator would be just what goes around. So we'll just say for purposes zero latitude, Longitude, I think it's latitude, that's the equator. So along there, probably, uh, it's, it's these electric currents are concentrated in the air, uh, found in the regions of strong auroral displays. Well, I think of, you know, aurora borealis, aurora, that's the one in the north, and then there's aurora something else, aurora something on the south. And so, but now those... Those I thought were at the poles. Uh, ooh, let's 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 put a link in the show notes for Electrojet. Sounds real cool. And then maybe we can find a picture of like, is there a visual aspect of this Electrojet? Is this the same thing as like, are these the the Aurora Borealis, the Electrojets, the magnetic? You know, when the magnetic uh, rays and things are going through the atmosphere, and then they interact with all the stuff the magnets and the electrical things and then they create the cool uh green and blue colors is is that is that the electro jet in the aurora boy uh, borealis i'm getting so excited i don't know moving on babidi bibidi bee boo electrokinetics noun from circa 1925 a branch of physics dealing with the motion of electric currents or charged particles. So this is again physics, but specifically it's how how do electric currents move through a thing, through the air, through uh, whatever, um, either electric currents or charged particles. You charge up the particles, you rub your socky feet on the floor, you, you're, you're charging up the particles, and then, you know, maybe like when you go to touch your friend, your enemy, your door handle, uh, whatever it is, that's that's electrokinetics. It's how do they move from one thing to another thing or whatever. That makes sense to me, electrokinetics. I just saw a video uh, of this little scrappy, I don't know, terrier probably, who for some reason was rubbing itself on the couch and it created all this static electricity. And so its hair was just sticking out all over its body, its little body. So it was probably hair like, I don't know, four inches, three inches, something. And it just looks so funny to have its its fur just poof, poofed out like that all over its little body. That's electrokinetics, baby. Electrolysts. 
So less, L-E-S-S, that's the suffix added that we have no electricity here in this electroless situation. It is an adjective from 1947, being or involving deposition of metal by chemical means instead of by electrodeposition. So electrodeposition, let's let's go back to that one. Electro uh, deposit to deposit by electrolysis. Um, and so this one is electroless. So it's the same idea, but it's it's using chemical means, chemically depositing things uh, instead of electronically, I guess. Electroless. Let's do that process electroless. Let's use chemicals instead of electricity. Bop, bop, beepity, ba, doo, ba, doo, bow. Electrologist is next. You'd probably just say electrologist. Noun from circa 1902. This word seems uh, old. I don't feel like we use this. Like, is this somebody who just studies electricity? I mean, we're going to read it and find out, but I don't know. Electrologist? I mean, there's 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 people who do electrolysis. Would they be electrolysis? I, I don't know. What is this word? A person. Oh, it is. It is. This is literally what it is. A person who removes hair by means of an electric current applied to the body with a needle-shaped electrode. And electrology is a noun. It seems like putting ology after the electro prefix would be more generally related to electricity than, than uh, electrolysis, uh, which is the removing of the hair or, or you know, similarly, uh, I believe. So, I don't know. It just seemed like, no, this should be about just all of electricity. Somebody who studies electricity, the study of electricity. Nope. Electrologist. Wait, electrologist. Is that electrologist? Yep. It's just it's just the person who removes the hair and they have this needle shaped electrode. It's tiny little electrode that they go doink, 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 doink. And then the hair comes out. It's probably not that easy. Uh, it's b a blend of electrolysis and logist. Ah, okay. So that's interesting. It's not actually ology that we're putting on the end of it. It's logy, L-O-G-Y. And that's a whole different suffix, I think. Maybe ology is not even its own suffix. I mean, I think it is. But, hmm, interesting. So there, it's a very similar... So that's why... You add L-O-G-Y to the end of a thing, and it's like the, the, the I don't know. You're just going to have to wait until the L's to learn about that. The last word is electroluminescent. E-L-E-C-T-R-O-L-U-M-I-N-E-S-C-E-N-T. -E -E electroluminescent adjective from circa 1909 of or relating to luminescence resulting from a high frequency discharge through a gas or from application of a current to a layer of phosphor for of a current that's you know probably an electrical current to a layer of phosphor phosphor pho things with phosphor can be luminescent think there's something about that uh if like phosphorus it can glow right that's what luminescence is it's glowing and so just anything related to luminescence that comes from this discharge a high frequency discharge uh through a gas or electrical current or whatever that's electro luminescent maybe i can post a picture on social media of something that is electro luminescent not bioluminescent, that would be luminescence from something that's biologically alive, a living creature. This is where you send an electrical signal, probably, through a thing to make it glow and luminesce. Electroluminescence is a noun. Those were all of the words, the fun, interesting electrical words, 
And now we have to pick a word of the episode. We had electrodialysis, electrodynamics, electroencephalogram, electroencephalograph, electrofishing, electroform, electrogenic, electrogram, electrohydraulic, electrojet, electrokinetic. Oh, you know what? I think I, uh, I think I skipped one of these. Darn it! I did it again. Um, so electro, I think the reason is because they're two very similar words. We got electrokinetic and electrokinetics. Which one did I read? Electrokinetic is an adjective from 1873 of or relating to the motion of particles or liquids that results from or produces a difference of electrical potential. Would have been good to read that one before. And then electrokinetics is the branch of physics dealing with the motion of electric currents or charged particles. So yeah, we, we sort of got some of it when, when we went through kinetics, but uh, yes, relating to that, all that stuff is electrokinetic. Back to the words, electroless, electrologist, and electroluminescent. Hmm, let's see. Definitely not picking electrofishing. Um, electrogram, I think, is interesting. Um, you know, I didn't really think about the fact that they do this, but yeah, you know, when they're doing maybe open heart surgery or open brain surgery, uh, they might want to put this, um, maybe, I don't know what it would be called. They put electrodes on the actual thing and then they can read the waves. You know, maybe sometimes they need to get that direct result. I kind of think, though, that maybe I want to pick electroluminescent because I just think that anything that glows is beautiful. Electroluminescent is when things glow from electricity. Things that glow are very pretty. Electroluminescent. That was fine. That was fine. Um, it is now movie time. Let's do this. I have a lot of movies to talk about. Definitely starting to catch up, though. We haven't been watching as many movies recently, so I'm getting caught up, slowly but surely. Talk to me. Talk to me, please, right now. Uh, this is the new horror movie that came out from Australia, and uh, I liked it very much. Um, what I learned later is that I didn't know this, um, but the guys who create it are twin brothers who who started a YouTube channel when they were children and they were, I think they were doing like a lot of stunts and things and eventually, or maybe even right away, started making just fun movies. Like this is probably what I would have been doing at that age if I was born at that time. We didn't have such great technology when I was that age, like 11 or something. Um, but I was making movies with my friends, real, real simple stuff. But these guys, they were using computers and like simple graphics. And then as they got older and technology advanced, they made fancier stuff and fancier stuff. And they got very big, very big YouTube channel. And eventually they wanted to make a horror movie. And they did. And it's great, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah, go watch Talk to Me if you like the horror movies. That's the end of the episode. What? Whoa. Thank you very much for listening and watching, possibly, on Patreon. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information.